Aloha, everybody out there in YouTube land. Welcome to our Zoom Bible study on the armor of God by Pastor Keith tonight. All righty. So we keep plugging away on the spiritual warfare and on the armor of God. And then the last week we we started, which was basically just a lot of scripture, um, divine strategy, which is really a lot of scriptures that are full of the promises of God that we can and should be referring to as we go along. Um, but before we get there, uh, let's see, Vicki, can you read this first prayer? Sure. Father, we continue to ask in the name of Jesus that you would give us the spirit of wisdom and a revelation in the knowledge of you, that the eyes of our hearts would be enlightened, that we may know and comprehend the hope to which you have called us, that we may know and comprehend the riches of your glorious inheritance in the saints and the immeasurable greatness of your power toward us who believe. Amen. And then Susie, can you read 1 John 5, 14 and 15? We already have what we ask for. Now, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. Thank you. So um, before we move on, so... How do we know what God's will is? Sometimes we don't. We just go on faith. Okay. But on a, on a bigger picture, if we hear God say something in the Bible, if we see Jesus do something, then uh, that is his will, right? It's always God's will to heal. It's always God's will to show mercy if somebody will ask for mercy. It's always God's will to save. And uh, regardless of, of the nastiness that some people are pulling, it's always God's will. He says the mercy triumphs over judgment. It's always God's will to show mercy over judgment. And, um, and then this uh, in verse 15 Whatever we ask, we know that we have. And that is, uh, that's like past tense. We already possess. It's already ours, in other words, the petitions that we've asked of him. It's like the stuff is all in the bank, you could say. Um, it's already ours. So anyway. And um, Anthony, go ahead and read Ephesians 2, 4 through 6. God's motive is love. God's motive is love, Ephesians 2, 4 through 6. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. So what does that say? Where are we seated then? Heavenly places. In Christ, right? That's where we are. So spiritual warfare, we're continuing this series on spiritual warfare. And again, I still don't know how long it's going to last. Uh, we'll see where Holy Spirit takes us. Uh, we've been involved in a war for our souls almost from day one. The adversary who hates mankind is bent on destroying us. In this war, there is no negotiation with the enemy. There are no timeouts. There are no truces. Satan, the mortal enemy of man, will use anyone and anything he can to kill, steal, and destroy us. Our ignorance of the word of God and the nature of God provides opportunity for the adversary to oppress us. What's the Bible say about the, my people are perish, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So it's what we don't know that hurts us, right? Jesus Christ once and for all has defeated the enemy, but in order for us to walk in that victory, we must have it settled in our hearts that the word of God is true and that God is for us. 
we can and must establish the blood bot in our own lives. What did I write? Anyway, we must, we can and must establish in our own lives what the blood purchased for us. I mean, it's ours. Whatever Jesus did for us is ours in the, through the finished work of the cross. We have the greater one living in us, right? And he has given us everything we need to walk in victory. But so, we have to receive it by faith. We right? have to, yeah. So today we're going to spend some more time with the armor of God, and we won't talk about the armor of God a lot, but we're going to look at a lot of verses, and these verses are all part of the armor of God. What the Word of God is is the sword of the Spirit, right? And so, and so it really is good for us to know what the Word of God says, and and you know a lot of times there, there's just different things that happen, and and that. Uh, you know, one particular verse may not fit every situation, but there is another verse that will fit it. So, um, and all God's promises are yes. And these basically are all promises that we're going to look at for the most part. All God's promises are yes and amen. They're yes in Christ. And so we can rely on the word of God and anything that rises up and says, yeah, but, or you don't understand, or this is my experience and all these arguments those things all have to bow the knee, bow their knee to the word of God and to the name of Jesus, right? Last week we ran out of time, so I just uh, added to the end of that lesson. And um, I think we're going to wrap up the study on the divine strategy today. It depends on how much discussion we have. And, and of course, you guys all know that I, I encourage discussion um, I, almost every passage of scripture, I have a question or two, maybe not all of them, but almost every one of them. So there will be ample opportunity to, to talk about the things we just read. You may, be, you may be reading that verse and the Holy Spirit may highlight something to you. And, and, uh, and if that happens, sure, bring it out. Um, because we want to know what the Holy Spirit is saying. Right? The Holy Spirit is our teacher. Some of the order for this lesson came out of Kevin Zadai's book, The Agenda of Angels. And I've used both the Berean Standard Study Bible and the Passion Translation throughout. But I think most on today's stuff is all the out of the Berean um, Study Bible. So like I said, we're going to look at a lot of different verses with many promises that support the victory that we walk in. You know, it's we can't just say that we have the victory and not be able to point point to where we have the victory or why we have the victory um you know otherwise we're just wishing and we're hoping but if we have the word of god that we can rely on then we can have faith in what god says and not just faith and i wish it was i wish things were different and unfortunately that's exactly where a lot of people are at is they're in this place in their lives they're not exercising any faith they just wish things were different and they're powerless right but we are not powerless. All right? We are not powerless because we have the word of God and because we have the spirit of God. Full armor of God. Todd, can you go ahead and read? Okay. Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can make your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the power of this world's darkness, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, take up the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you will be able to stand your ground, and having done everything to stand. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteous, righteousness arrayed, and with your feet fitted with the readiness of the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. 
and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times with every kind of prayer and petition. To this end, stay alert with all perseverance in your prayers for all the saints. Amen. Okay. <clears throat> so that's that's our where we always uh, look to when we're talking about the full armor of God. And then uh, last week we moved on, um, we got third down to down to here. I think we stopped at um, <clears throat> the enemies will be defeated. And um, part two begins with overcoming peace. So, um, Mary Lou, can you read these? Uh, this John 16 33. Okay, where is that? John 1633. Uh, okay, the notes you sent are different than what you got up here. Um, it shouldn't be. This is um this is the top of page four. Yeah, uh, on the notes that you sent, it says James 4, 6. <laughs> really? Yeah. Submission to authority? Um, no, we, we, we moved way on down. I passed, all, passed those up because we read those last week. Oh, you skipped them. Okay. Yeah. So just go to the next page. Scroll, scroll, scroll. No. To part two, overcoming. There we go. There we go. All right. Overcoming peace. John 16, 33. And everything I've taught you is so that the peace which is in me will be in you and will give you great confidence as you rest in me. For in this unbelieving world, you will experience trouble and sorrows, but you must be courageous, for I, am, so I, for I have conquered the world. Amen. So where do we get true peace? Question. Christ. Right. Jesus says in him we will have peace, right? And who has conquered the world on our behalf? Lord Jesus Christ. Christ, right? So the battle, Same the battle is already won. Yeah. Amen. Angel, would you like to read tonight? I... Which one? Angel, which would you one? like she to wants read? To know which one? Um, James. The two verses under a way out is always provided. James 1 13 and 1 Corinthians 10 13. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. 1 Corinthians 10 13. We all experience times of testing, which is normal for every human being. But God will be faithful to you. He will screen and filter the severity, nature, and timing of every test or trial you face so that you can bear it. And each test is an opportunity to trust him more. For along with every trial, God has provided for you a way of escape that will bring you out of it victoriously amen and i think that was probably out of the passion <clears throat> so who tempts and tests us when we don't want to <laughs> mention <laughs> well the enemy tempts us god tests us <clears throat> so the enemy is the one that is tempting us right yeah. Actually, the word uh, 
you can't find a lot of support showing that God is testing us. Um, not a lot of support for it. Um, and the word test and, and temp are off, often the same words. So anyway. And um, why does God allow testing? I think the testing is our own flesh problems lots of times. And so we're drawn away by our own lusts. And so we uh, need to choose to walk in the spirit, not in the flesh. So why does God allow testing? Because he gives us free will. And so if we're being drawn away by our own lust, he's not going to stop us. But when we call out for him to him for help, he will certainly help us because he wants us to be overcomers. So we have at least a couple examples in the Bible of Satan having to get permission to test somebody. One with, was with Job and the other was with Peter and where Jesus says to Peter, Satan is asked to sift you or to test you. But I've prayed for you, right? This is what Jesus said, but I've prayed for you. When you return, strengthen your brethren. So testings come and, and the Lord determines how far the enemy can go. Right. It is never, God never gives the enemy permission to test us to the point that we are absolutely going to be destroyed. Right. We'll have to get to the bottom of ourselves sometimes and really dig in and, and, and decide what we believe and, and, um, and all that and, and be persistent in our faith. But the devil does not have permission to destroy us. In fact, Jesus says that, uh, in fact, Jesus says that nothing by any means will hurt us or destroy us. Well, that's if we take the authority though. Um, I think some people open the door to the enemy, like, if a person starts taking drugs and their lives get totally out of control, the devil could destroy them. I mean, the, the devil does rob, kill, and destroy. But if we cry out to the Lord and repent, that means go the other direction, not the destructive direction, and call out to the Lord for help. Even if we caused it ourselves, he's merciful and wants to forgive us and help us. Right. Um, yeah, he's always there. And we're in the time of grace right now, not judgment. And so, uh, yeah, I think a lot of the trouble that, that comes on us could be our own doing. But then again, like I was talking about at the opening was when we are serving God and we're bringing the light of God and the gospel of God. There'll be opposition and persecution, like what just happened today on our Zoom Bible study. <laughs> you know, we got bombed by that that person, and that is the the devil and the opposition and the persecution from uh, bringing forth the light and the truth. So we can't be um, discouraged when those things happen because. Yeah, they're gonna happen we are taking territory back from the enemy when we bring the light and bring the gospel and bring the truth that sets people free. And so the enemy wants to cause interference. And really the only thing that can stop us from moving forward and serving the Lord is ourselves. If we get too weary, too discouraged, and we just decide to stop, or if we get offended, get angry, then that can really interfere with our ministry. So we have to stay free and, uh, you know, just throw it off. We throw off what this guy did and all of his critters with them in the name of Jesus. And by the blood of the lamb, we throw it off and we keep moving forward. We keep plowing forward, doing the work of the Lord. Don't let anything interfere with our destiny and our determination to follow Christ. 
Okay. Anthony. Um, yeah. Uh, hey, man. I think that there is, uh, with, you know, when I was thinking about, you know, why God allows, why does God allow testing? I was thinking that a lot of the time it goes to the fact of we need the testing sometimes to see the reflection of Christ in our own lives. I know that's a personal thing for me is that oftentimes, you know, I cannot see how the Lord is working in my life until the testing comes. And I've seen the growth of where I once was at the start of my walk and how I've, you know, grown in Christ and grown to be more of a reflection of Christ in my own walk. And I think that that isn't really seen unless there is testing. Right. Cause it's like, I, uh, the, my, one of, uh, one of the sermons I was listening to from my pastor at the church, uh, I think it was like two weeks ago, they were talking about, uh, a testimony about how a year ago or a year and a half ago, their wife gave them a thermos and the lid wasn't tied in all the way. So he had it in the back of his car and he was driving and made a turn and it spilled all over the place. So he called his wife and he was really upset and they were arguing back and forth for a little bit. And then a year later, the same situation happened. But this time he called his wife and he was like, you know, you forgot to put the lid on again, you know, like, you know, but it wasn't arguing. It was him, you know, saying, saying what happened, them talking about it and then praying, praying through it. So it's like, God allows those testings and those struggles and even the things like you guys are talking about now. It's like we we get to reflect on the growth that the Lord has brought us through and the situations that the Lord has brought us through to see where our walk is with him. Uh, one thing that I've heard very often a lot of the times is the things that we portray, well, like the things that like, like whether it's anger or whether it's, you know, sinful tendencies, oftentimes the things that we show in the midst of testing are the things that the Lord is trying to purge out of us. Right. But that's what I wanted to share. So if you want to know what's in somebody's heart, put pressure on. When you shake the glass, what's inside comes out, right? <laughs> so Amen. And so if we have uh, if we have bitterness and and that stuff in our heart, but we're wearing a smile most of the time, and but the pressure gets put on all of a sudden that vile bitterness will come out of our mouths. And we're like, where did that come from? Well, that's been hiding. That's been hiding there undercover. But it's just been exposed because of because things got shaken up a little bit. So <clears throat> the truth brings freedom. Vicky, read John eight thirty two. For if you embrace the truth, it will release more freedom into your lives. So many translations say, if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. But intellectual knowing and actually embracing are two different things, aren't they? The Greek word translated know has a meaning of to know intimately. It's more than head knowledge, but is an experiential knowledge of the truth. So when we have an experiential, intimate, experiential knowledge of the truth, that truth will bring freedom in our lives. If we just can uh, quote something by memory, but it's not really living in us, then, um, then it's probably not going to bring a lot of freedom. There are a lot of people that quote scripture, but are all bound up with issues, right? Overcome evil. Um, whose turn is it? Susie, it's your turn. Could you read these three verses? Romans 12, 19. Do not avenge yourselves, beloved, but leave room for God's wrath. 
for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord, Romans 12, 20. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him a drink, for in doing so, you will heap burning coals upon his head. Romans 12, 21, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Thank you. So the expression for in doing so, you'll heap burning coals on his head has been treated several different ways. And you guys have probably all heard this preached on several different ways. In the old covenant, this would be bringing judgment on our enemies. But in the new covenant, and it really has always been this way, God's heart is to show mercy over, ju over judgment. Mercy triumphs over judgment. The truth Paul may be desiring to bring out here is that when we show love and mercy to our enemies, that burning conviction will come upon them, leading them to repentance. Um, does anybody have a uh, any thoughts on that? Give love instead of evil. It's just better to love people, isn't it? Show love. Respond with love. So question, do we have a choice whether to be overcome by evil or to be overcomers? Yes. We have free will, yes. We absolutely do, don't we? So we're not, we are not a puppet that somebody is pulling our strings. At least we're not supposed to be. Um, if people have enough oppression in their lives, and that's exactly what they are, is they are just a puppet for the devil. And uh, when he says dance, they dance. When he says get angry, uh, yell at somebody, they just, you know, they do, right? But as believers, that's not our lot. That's not for us. We have a choice to overcome evil. We can be reactors or responders. Yeah. So when we're reacting, we're letting our emotions take over. If we respond, we're uh, using wisdom from heaven and we can respond in the spirit. Amen. And uh, I want to go back to what Anthony was talking about a minute ago. Um, so, you know, when, uh, when silver is purified, and probably gold too is purified, but we'll talk about silver. Um, the, the silversmith knows that the silver is has reached its highest point of purity, basically when he can see his reflection in it, right? And so when we've gone through some stuff that's challenged us and tested us and tried us, and Jesus can be seen in us still, and we can see Jesus in ourselves, um, we can see where we're at if we have all kinds of stuff coming to the surface and we realize then we can see that that um, we need some help you know we need some, we need some grace and mercy from God and we need to get some word in there and get set free from some stuff. So I've said for a long time that our reaction to a situation is a pretty good mirror to what's going on in our souls. And speaking of Anthony, can you read Revelation 12, 11? Oops, you're muted. Is he muted? Anthony is muted. <laughs> Anthony. I, uh, I unpaused the video, not the microphone, wrong one, but it works. So <laughs> Revelation 12, oh, 11. I think Ash is on now, Ashley. Hi, Ashley. Yeah, Ashley jumped on too. Okay. Hi. Hi, Hi honey. Uh, Revelations 12, 11. They have conquered him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives so as to shy away from death. 
This passage, thank you. This passage deserves a whole lesson on its own, but we're not going to do that today and and maybe another time. And I think in the past I spent a fair amount of time with it. Um, but anyway, what is it about the blood of Jesus that is so powerful? What is it about the blood of Jesus that is so powerful? I don't know if I've thought about that question. The fulfillment of the cross. It's the work of the cross, isn't it? So, yeah. so what did Jesus say at that uh, at the Last Supper there? <clears throat> the blood is the testament to the new covenant. For the remission of sins. Yes. Specifically. And so if our if if our sins have been remitted, then there is there, then there is no condemnation for us. Mm. Right? Amen. And so whatever, whatever the devil tries to throw at us through other people generally or by suggestions in our mind, whatever condemnation the enemy tries to level on us, the blood of Jesus has cleansed us of all that. Those sins are remitted. Doesn't matter what we did. Doesn't matter what somebody remembers. Those sins are gone. There's no condemnation for us. Amen. And what is the word of our testimony? Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Yes, yes, yes. What else is there? What else could we say about the word of our testimony? Our witness to the the blood of the Lamb in our own lives. Right. It's the lives we lead, isn't it? Yeah. It's the lives we lead. So it comes out of our mouth <clears throat> in the life we lead. If what comes out of our mouth is consistent with the finished work of the cross, is consistent with what the blood of Jesus has accomplished for us, then, uh, then we will find ourselves walking in victory. If what's coming out of our mouth is not consistent with the blood of Jesus, then we're going to have some trouble. And it doesn't mean that we're not going to be tested in this, right? The devil would like us to forget about what Jesus has done for us. And I, you know, I know some people that that are every time every time they turn around, it seems like they are really down on themselves, just really dissing themselves. Something horrible. I'm like, come on. You know Jesus. At least you say you know Jesus. You gotta stop talking like this, right? Give an example of something they might say. Oh, I'm so stupid. Oh. <laughs> I'm so stupid and so worthless, and everybody hates me. Those kind of things, and I'm like, oh, come on. Anyway, not gonna dwell there. Amen. <laughs> Lies of the enemy. What do you say? And the lies of the enemy. The lies of the enemy, and 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 people often are all too willing to agree with the lies of the enemy, and they just take that hook, line, and sinker, and it's really too bad. All right, <clears throat> I'm going to ask Ashley since she hasn't had a chance to read yet. Ash, will you read um, Matthew 16, 17, and eighteen? Sure. Matthew 16, so, okay. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by Father in heaven. And I will tell you, oh, and I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Thank you, and amen. So who, what or who is this rock? What is this rock? Jesus. Not just Jesus. Holy Spirit. 
This rock is a revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Right? This rock is a revelation of Jesus Christ. And upon this revelation of Jesus Christ, I will build my church. What was that verse you're quoting in Revelation the other day about the spirit? Um, the spirit the of prophecy. prophecy is the spirit of Jesus Christ. Something like that. And it's got the word revelation <clears throat> in it, that verse too, doesn't um, it? No, I think not. Right? So it's the revelation of who Christ is. And that and upon that revelation of who Christ is, God is building his church. <laughs> and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And gates, we gotta think about this. Now gates are stationary, aren't they? Gates are stationary, so the kingdom of God is advancing and pushing back those gates. It's not the gates of hell are, <clears throat> are advancing on us, so we have to resist them. It's the gates of hell cannot hold back the gospel. Hell is on the defensive. Hell is on the defensive. Exactly. I love that. Hell is on the defensive. And Todd, can you read <clears throat> um, First John three eight? He destroyed the works of the devil. First John three eight. The one who practices sin is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the very start. This is why the Son of God was revealed to destroy the works of the devil. Thank you. So, why was Jesus manifested? To destroy the works of the devil. To destroy the works of the devil. So what are some of the works of the devil? Self-condemnation. Amen. Lies. Lies. Self-condemnation. What else? Sin. Rumors. Rumors. Sick Sin. Sickness and disease. Sickness, disease, death. Those are works of the devil. Jesus came to destroy those works. Wait on the Lord. Mary Lou, can you read Isaiah 40, 31? Wait on the Lord. And then go ahead and read those next two verses also. Okay. Isaiah 40, 31. But those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. The Lord God fights for you. Uh, James 2010. Uh, one, uh, one of you can put a thousand to flight. Because the Lord your God fights for you, just as he promised. Deuteronomy 3.22 Do not be afraid of them, for the Lord your God himself will fight for you. Amen. So before, um, let's, let's go back up to 40.31. So that word wait, if you look it up and you study that word wait out, that is not a passive waiting, just sitting on your hands. I'm just waiting for God to do something, All right? This is an uh, waiting with anticipation. It's an active, antici actively anticipating God to come through. It's not just sitting back hoping that something's going to change. Right? So it's waiting. It's it's waiting in faith, basically, expecting God, and you're in faith, expecting God to renew our strength. Okay. That so, went that. Oh. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say that 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 reminds me of like um, the verse that says, "Be still and know that I am God." Like that part where it's like, "Be still." When I've done some studying on it, a lot of the times that "be still" is not just you know doing nothing and being completely like frozen still, but rather being still in the presence of the Lord. In, in prayer and in worship and, you know, just being 
in him and only being in him. Amen. Perfect. Okay, so these next two verses. So how do we get God to fight for us? The Bible says that the Lord your God fights for you, just as he promised. How do we get God to fight for us? We trust him. By faith, isn't it? It's by faith... Mm -hmm in his word it's by faith in what he said if if they didn't know what god had to say if they didn't know what god's word was they wouldn't have anything to place their trust in it is written go ahead but he says just as he promised just as he promised so god spoke he said i'm going to fight for you and we stand still. Pardon, Susie? I'm sorry. We stand We stand still and we wait on him instead of going before him. Yeah, it's not always a good idea to get in front of God. <laughs> it's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, sometimes we do that and we're, and sometimes, but you know, I think, I think most of the time it's not so much that God is saying you're running too fast. I can't keep up. I think it's uh, we're dragging our feet. <clears throat> Which is just that. God is for us. Romans 8.31. Um, Angel, can you read that? Romans 8.31. What then shall we say in response to these things, if God is for us, who can be against us? Thank you. So, is God always for us? Yes. yes. He is always for us. So, <clears throat> we've possibly all said something at some point in our life, something along the lines of, God must think that I'm really strong. Otherwise, he wouldn't have put this on me. Yeah, Susie does that a lot. God doesn't <laughs> put that on us. Thank you, Mother. <laughs> God doesn't put that on us. God does not oppress us. He does not put that on us. He may allow some things to come on us so that our character will be developed, so that we are strengthened, you know, so that when we stand in faith, and we see the deliverance of God, our faith is built up. Right? But he didn't put it there. I think that, you know, he allows things to happen to us. And by us still serving him and going with him, that we learn that we have more strength than we think we do. Like, right. oh, no, I can't do that. But he, he, you know, teaches us as we serve others and stuff, how much strength you know, and power we have in him, not, you know, by not, you know, going, oh my God, I can't do this. Right. It's like, well, why can't we? But he doesn't orchestrate it to begin with, you know, it's not his plan. So, so we no. can, so we can uh, refer back to our past victories for the current battles. We can, we can just like David said, you know, when he came to Goliath and maybe it was when he was talking to, to Saul, at any rate, God delivered me from the lion. He, he gave me the victory over the lion. He gave me the victory over the bear. God's going to give me the victory over that guy. Amen. Right. That's so he'd already, God had already shown himself in David's life that he was going to give him the victory. And so when we've experienced some victories in our life, and then we have another test that comes up the devil leans on us whatever we can refer back the lord gave me victory over that the lord's going to give me victory over this in jesus name greater is he that is in us than he who is in the world amen ashley can i got ashley in the bottom of the bowl she can go ahead and read this next one 
Ashley, can you read Psalms 44, 5? Yes, yeah, sir. Through you, we repel our foes. Through your name, we trample our enemies. Praise God. <laughs> right, so what is the name of the Lord? What is the name of the Lord? Through you, we repel our foes. Through your name, we trample our enemies. Jesus Christ. Right? That's the name of our Lord. Yes. In the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Jesus has given us his name. Now, they didn't know the name of Jesus in the Old Testament, but they knew the Lord. Well, some of them did. So and, that's, they, and they knew the names of God. They knew they knew who Jehovah Rapha was, and they knew who Jehovah the Sid Canoe was, and they knew who Jehovah Machadash was. So they had these covenant names of God, covenant redemptive names of God that they could refer to. But all these names <clears throat> of God, redemptive names of God that we see in the Old Testament, they're all in the package of Jesus Christ. And Jesus, uh, Rapha. Jehovah Rapha, Jesus, God who heals. So if we're going to use the name of Jesus against our foes, it wouldn't make sense that, that God had caused the problem. Because why would we have to use the name of Jesus against God? You know, so God doesn't make us sick. The devil makes us sick. The trials and tribulations that come on us are from the enemy, not from God. Why would we use the name of Jesus against God, right? Right. Um, back up to Vicky, Joshua 1 8. Speak the word. Speak the word, Joshua 1 8. This book of the law must not depart from your mouth. And that doesn't mean we're not supposed to speak it, it means we're not supposed to stop speaking it, right? Right. Must not depart from our mouth, like be vacant. From our mouth right. it needs to be in our mouth this book of the law must not depart from your mouth meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it for then you will prosper and succeed in all you do amen so meditating on something and people people meditate on on what might happen all the time and they, <clears throat> they chew on that and they squeeze every bit of bad luck, every bit of junk out of something that might happen by meditating on that. But what we're to do is meditate on the book of the law, meditate on the word of God. And meditating, you probably all heard this, is, um, is, uh, is like a cow chewing its cud. I don't know if, what you know about cows, but cows have several stomachs so they eat the grass and the hay and all that and it goes into one stomach and then they chew their cud and it goes into another stomach and then another stomach and another stomach so a cow's um uh, digestive system is is quite efficient in extracting all the nutrition that it can out of what it's eating and so when we meditate on the word of god we chew on it and we keep on chewing on it chewing on it we see a different side of it and we chew on it some more and we see a different side of it. So we, so we extract all the, all the value, as it were, out of the word of God by meditating on it. It's not just, it's not just a topical surface reading, but it's reading it and then say, and then it's going a little bit deeper. And Holy Spirit, what are you saying? What are you saying to me or Holy Spirit about this? And it going a little deeper and then we get in our dictionaries and, and uh, go a little deeper and 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 uh, that's what we call meditating on it. we just feed on it so what is key to prospering with the lord meditate on his word every day meditate on the word of god right it's a lot of wisdom in the word and when we cooperate with it right. good things happen and so the purpose of meditating on the word of god day and night the purpose of that is so that we may be careful to do what is written in the word so that we may be careful to be doers of the word 
Amen. All right. And that goes along with that scripture and lack of knowledge. Yeah. Yeah, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Perish because of a lack of knowledge. So he's given us the the book to read to prosper it so we can prosper and have a good life if we cooperate with God's ways. <clears throat> that uh that makes me think of uh John 15, for I am the branch and ye are the vines, if ye abide in me, and my words abide in you. Exactly. Yeah. My words abide in you, and who is Jesus? The Word. The Word. <laughs> <laughs> right. So we so we meditate on Jesus. We meditate on everything He said. Everything we meditate on on the Word. <clears throat> um. <clears throat> excuse me. Who just read? Is that you, Vicky? Did you just read? I don't remember. Did I? <laughs> I think you did. Be strong and courageous. Susie, can you read Joshua 1 9? Have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Thank you. So, that, do not be afraid is repeated throughout the Bible. <laughs> in one form or another, something like 365 times. I haven't actually counted it, but I've read that many times over the years. People have uh, have uh, said that 365 days, one for each day of the year, do not be afraid, fear not, right? The Lord in verses six, seven, and nine all tell Joshua to be strong and courageous. So my question to us is why would God repeat this command to Joshua? This is like important. Thomas was doubting. A lot of people doubted, so we gotta have it stick in your head <laughs> and in right. your heart. Go ahead, Todd. Because it was important and it had and it and it really meant something. Exactly. Yeah, it's very important. So Joshua, you know, Moses has just died, and Joshua now has the responsibility to le lead Israel into the promised land. And Joshua had seen the trouble Moses had with the Israel. All right, he was his right hand man for the most part. And so Joshua may have been tempted to say, Oh, no, I can't do this. These people are a bunch of thick headed, stiff necked unbelievers. <laughs> but the Lord is saying over and over again, do not be or, or be strong and courageous, right? It's very important. Very important. So when we get overcome with anxiety and fear, what happens to our minds? What happens to our imaginations? Goes wild. Goes wild. <laughs> That's a it good really way to put does. It. And it's like totally open to the devil being able to throw all sorts of lies and scary things into your imagination. And you can think the worst uh, catastrophe. And you can't even see the reality of the problem anymore because it's been magnified into a huge, much bigger thing than it really is. Like uh, how those men said, we're like grasshoppers in their eyes, you know, they're so big and we're so little. And so you, your imagination just goes to uh, total defeat. I can't win. I'm too weak. Right. And uh, so to be courageous and bold and put your confidence in the Lord. And then you look at it and you look at it and you think, well, with, with God, this is doable. You know, God helped me at this victory and this victory. He's going to help me today in this and I'll be victorious again. So we can be bold and courageous in the Lord and we can see things 
how they really are. And he can give us a strategy. He can give us wisdom from heaven on how to approach it. Like David knew he was really good with his slingshot. <laughs> You know, he didn't need all that armor and stuff. He didn't need to fight with his muscles. And so he just goes out there with his slingshot. I don't know if in the natural, if that rock could have really sunk into Goliath's head like it with did. Enough velocity, it would. Really? Or oh, if yeah. I thought, well, maybe he, he threw it and then God did the supernatural and made it go in. <laughs> you know, I don't know. But uh, with God... All things are doable. Another day I was thinking about that word doable. I was thinking about healing and how he says in 1 Peter 2.24, by Jesus stripes, I was healed. So I'm already healed. So I thought of the word with Jesus, all things are doneable. <laughs> They're already done. Yeah. So we can be bold and courageous when we know the Lord and the strength. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So um, we've been at this for an hour and 45 minutes already. Goodness. Um, we can stop here and pick up here next week, or we can uh, spend another 15 minutes and um, get through it. So what do you all think? Where are we at and speak the word here? Um, we are right here we are strength for battle strength for battle yeah we've got over half a page left so i think we should probably call it a night but it's been really good is that all right, all, for, is that all right you. with you guys to pick this back up next week at this point yep yep and yep. thank you for all hanging in there with our little commercial we had there for a little while <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was pretty strange. That's a first. That's a first. We've been doing this for a couple of years and over two years, two years and three months. And we've never really been bombed like that before. Right. I I thought it was kind of interesting how Pastor Keith was talking about it. Like right beforehand, it's like, oh, yeah, when you, you know, when you're doing ministry, you know, the devil's always going to try to come and, you know, we should expect persecution. He was like talking about that right before he started the started even uh, the prayer and the lesson. And then right when the lesson starts, this that it, that happened. I thought it was like I was like, oh, praise God, hallelujah. Maybe maybe that was said to bring uh, us into perspective when it did happen. <laughs> yeah. So thank you all for, for hanging in there. Thanks for hanging and, in there. And, and I'm sure you shot up some prayers. And whose <laughs> turn is it to read? Anthony, I'm going to ask you to read this prayer for us all. Read John 1, 2. For sure. I'd love to. Lord Jesus, beloved friends, I pray that you are continually prospering in every way and that you continually enjoy good health just as your souls are prospering. Amen. Amen. And Amen. thank you. Hallelujah.